A seemingly perfect family hires a beautiful nanny to care for their daughter. However, they're unaware of the teen's vengeful intentions. In the Kessler residence, married couple Linda and Mark proudly watch their daughter Chloe play the violin. Before the pair depart for their anniversary dinner date, Linda thanks the nanny Barbara for agreeing to watch Chloe for the night. She asks the elderly woman if she'd like them to get her anything while they're out, but the nanny doesn't hear the question, worrying the mother. After the parents leave, Chloe tells Barbara she's hungry and wants macaroni and cheese. Elsewhere, someone draws over Linda's picture with a black marker. The mystery person watches security footage of a woman leaving a package outside a hospital, then grabs a teddy bear. At the restaurant, restaurant, Mark playfully admonishes his wife for checking her phone during the date. At the house, the disoriented nanny forgets she's cooking a meal for the child. Chloe sees Barbara struggling, so she uses a step stool and offers to pour the pasta into the boiling water. The nanny warns that the water might be too hot, but the precocious child holds the box over the pot. When Barbara grabs the girl's hand to move it away from the stove, Chloe drops the box into the pot, causing the scalding liquid to splash onto her hand. At the restaurant, Linda's phone rings and she tries to ignore it, but the annoyed man tells her to answer the call. Eventually, the couple arrives home and finds the EMT attending to their daughter's injury. The man explains that Barbara might have dementia and suggests taking her to the hospital for a checkup. Later, Linda informs the remorseful nanny that she needs to see a doctor. When the elderly woman asks if she can tuck Chloe into bed, the sympathetic mother says they've decided to let her go. As Linda tucks the girl in bed, Chloe says her burn still hurts. So the woman hands her a tablet for the pain. In the bedroom, Mark suggests she take a break from her job to care for their child, but the woman argues that they need her income to make ends meet. The husband says he just needs a few more weeks to finish the renovations on the house they're flipping, and they'll hopefully earn three times their investment. However, Linda knows they both can't afford to stop working, and the only way to make their situation work is to hire a new nanny. Weeks later, the woman attends a conference meeting at the ad agency where she works. Reynolds, her boss, assigns Linda to lead the Hooper account after she suggests a promising campaign on how to advertise the brand's canned spaghetti. Reynolds asks Gary to help with the project, but the woman says she can lead the account herself. After the meeting, Linda heads to her office, where her secretary Jess asks her about her ongoing search for a new nanny. The woman says the online ads haven't worked and laments about the difficulty of finding the right person to take care of Chloe. The secretary suggests using hidden cameras to monitor the nanny, but Linda thinks she might not even need one if she finds the perfect candidate. At the construction site, a bored Chloe tells her father that she wants to go home, so Mark asks the child to play by the front yard while he finishes up. By the porch, the girl spots the nail gun in the yard and curiously picks it up. Fortunately, someone stops her from using the power tool. Moments later, Chloe introduces Heather to Mark, and the teen says she was walking by when she saw the girl playing with a nail gun. Heather asks about the child's burns, and Chloe says says the other kids call it monster skin. So the teen says they're just jealous of the unique Mark, then shows the scar on her thigh. That afternoon, Linda arrives home and Mark introduces Heather, who coincidentally is looking for a babysitting job. After the man tells Chloe to take the teen to her room, he tells his wife that he thinks Heather's the perfect person for the job. Later, the couple interviews the teen, who says she's had a lot of babysitting experience and gives Mrs. McCready's phone number as her reference. Before bed, Linda calls Mrs. McCready McCready, who gives the teen a glowing review. After the call, she tells her husband she wants to buy a nanny cam. He thinks she's paranoid, but eventually agrees to her plan, so Linda calls the teen to deliver the good news. On the other end, Heather expresses her gratitude for the opportunity while fighting back tears. The following night, Linda buys a discreet nanny cam from the spy shop but chooses against one that records audio when the seller says they're illegal to use. The next day, the woman watches the live feed from her office. That afternoon, Barbara Barbara drops by the house to speak to Chloe. When the new nanny sees the older woman, she tells the child to go inside and then berates Barbara for physically and emotionally scarring the child. Seconds later, Linda arrives and asks the teen what happened. Heather lies and says the former nanny screamed at her for stealing her job. So the mother gives her a comforting hug and asks her to stay for dinner. While setting the table, the phone rings and the nanny answers it. On the other end, Barbara thinks she's talking to Linda, and she apologizes for what happened to Chloe. So Heather cold says the family prefers if the older woman perishes soon. When she returns to the table, the teen lies that it was a telemarketer. During
during the meal, the daughter mentions seeing her former nanny, so Linda says she'll call Barbara tomorrow. Later that night, someone sneaks into the older woman's house. The next day, the mother receives a call from the police informing her that Barbara passed away last night, and the cops believe she took her own life. On the day of the funeral, the mother finally tells the child what happened to her old nanny. Unprompted, the babysitter says that taking one's own life is common among dementia patients. The statement baffles Linda, since she never divulged the cause of death. While the couple attends the funeral service, the nanny teaches Chloe a monologue from Little Women. Then, she spends the rest of the day cleaning the house. When the parents return, Linda mentions a family friend's son, saying he's never heard of Heather despite the teen's claim that she went to the local high school. Inside, they immediately notice how spotless the entire house is. And when the woman checks on Chloe, she sees Heather sleeping next to the girl. The nanny gets up from the bed and says the child had a nightmare and asked her to lie next to her. Linda tells her that she doesn't have to clean the house because they hired her to care for their daughter. Seeing as the woman resents that she did the chores, the upset teen excuses herself and leaves. In bed, the mother watches the footage and thinks it's strange that the nanny and Chloe spent three hours talking. Mark doesn't find it weird and implores her to appreciate the person helping around the house, especially since the wife sometimes neglects the chores due to her busy schedule. The next day, the daughter tells Linda she prefers the nanny's cooking. Then, the mother asks the girl if she's been practicing the violin, but the child says she's doing the monologue Heather taught her for the talent show. When the teen arrives, Linda asks what she and her daughter talked about for three hours yesterday, and the nanny wonders how she knew what happened while they were gone. To change the topic, the woman firmly insists that she make sure Chloe practices the violin and not the monologue for the talent show. After Linda leaves, Heather searches the living room for a camera. Meanwhile, Mark contemplates checking the nanny cam on his phone but decides against it because he thinks it's inappropriate. In the office, Jess sees her boss watching the feed and regrets suggesting a nanny cam. She asks Linda why she's so worried about the teen when she's been doing a great job. So the woman admits she feels jealous because Heather takes care of her daughter when she's supposed to be the one rearing the child. The secretary assures her that there's nothing to worry about, and Linda agrees she needs to stop snooping. At the renovated house, Mark tours a couple who are interested in the home. However, when he turns the lights on, the chandelier short circuits and the bulbs explode, scaring away the potential buyers. As he chases the couple, the man bumps his knee on a sawhorse. He calls his wife to tell her what happened, but the distracted woman doesn't recognize his need for comfort and assurance, and instead offers half-hearted support because she has to get back to work. Later, Mark arrives home and enjoys a drink on the couch. The nanny joins him and tends to his hurt knee. Then, she hands him some of Chloe's medication to help alleviate the pain. When she learns he had a rough day at work, the teen shares that she fought with her boyfriend. The man asks what they fought about, but the nanny teases she won't spill unless he gives her some liquor. Eventually, she says she and her boyfriend argued because she wants a family while he wishes to focus on his career. So he tells Heather that she's special and still has the rest of her life ahead of her. Suddenly, the nanny leans in for a kiss, prompting Mark to swiftly end the conversation. Before he heads upstairs, the teen says she knows about the camera and then asks him if he watches her. Stunned by her question, the man insists she leave. Then he goes to the bedroom. When he doesn't see her in the front yard, he checks the nanny cam feed on the laptop, where he watches Heather seductively removing her clothes. That night, Linda scans the day's footage, but the video crashes just before the teen undresses. The next day, the woman returns to the spy shop to buy cameras that record audio, then places them all over the house. On the day of the talent show, the mother leaves work early to make it to the performance. However, Reynolds catches her, so she says she has a family emergency. At the house, Heather helps Mark with his tie and assures him that they didn't do anything wrong because all he did was watch her yesterday. The man feigns ignorance, but his flustered reaction tells her otherwise. In the vehicle, the nanny calls the police, pretending to be distressed. Later, a cop pulls Linda over and says they received a call about a car with a description matching hers, claiming she abducted a child. That night, the mother apologizes to Chloe for missing her performance, but the upset girl runs to her bedroom. Linda confronts the nanny for pushing her daughter to do the monologue, but the teen says it was Mark's decision. Then, the mother asks if she told the truth about attending the local high school, so Heather admits she ran away from home six months ago because her parents abused her, and she begs the couple not to contact them. She apologizes for lying, so Mark tells her to go home and they'll call her in the morning. After the teen leaves, the husband admonishes his wife for missing their daughter's performance and taking her anger out on Heather. Linda explains that the cops pulled her over.
over, but it was a misunderstanding. However, the man says all her shortcomings never seem to be her fault, and adds that at least the nanny was there to support Chloe during the performance. As she tucks her daughter in bed, the child says the nanny told her that she was unhappy before she met their family. When Linda states Heather won't work for them anymore, the girl exclaims that she loves the nanny and wants her to stay. Later, the mother calls Mrs. McCready's number, and the teen's phone rings, revealing that she pretended to be her reference to secure the babysitting job. Meanwhile, Heather enters the renovated house in the middle of the night. Concurrently, Mark tells his wife that he removed the camera in the living room. The woman reminds him that the nanny lied to them, but he argues that it's no different from the false advertising she does at work every day. He adds that Heather lied because she's a scared teenager, then mentions Linda's own questionable choices when she was the nanny's age, such as terminating a pregnancy. Mark thinks she's jealous because Heather acts more like a mother to Chloe than she ever has and thinks it's because she never wanted children in the first place. Linda stands firm on her decision to fire the babysitter, but the husband says he won't allow it, especially since their daughter's grown attached. The woman thinks he's attracted to the nanny, but he vehemently denies the allegation. Unbeknownst to the couple, the teen watches the argument through a live feed from inside the renovated house's attic. The next day, Linda watches the nanny cam feed and notes the name Jake Lambert after hearing Heather mention it. Suddenly, Reynolds barges into the office and catches the woman, so he threatens to transfer the Hooper account to Gary if she lets her personal life affect her work. Later, she returns to the spy shop to access legal documents, genealogy archives, and criminal records in hopes of finding Jake Lambert. The shop owner finds a man with the same name in Florham, a town 60 miles away. So she leaves a voice message on the home phone telling Mark she is working late and won't be home for dinner. Unbeknownst to her, the nanny hears the message. At the Lambert residence, Linda meets Jake and Gail, Heather's parents. Meanwhile, the teen hands Mark a drink when he returns from work. She informs him that his wife called to say she won't be home for dinner. Concurrently, Heather's concerned parents express their worry over their daughter's disappearance. To ensure she found the right people, the woman asks to see their child's pictures. However, Jake shows her unsettling pictures of the teen in revealing outfits, prompting Linda to lie and say that the Heather she met isn't their daughter. At the house, Mark starts feeling dizzy after consuming the drink the teen gave him. When the nanny calls him for dinner, he sees she's changed into a nightgown. Then, she pours him another drink and empties a mystery capsule's contents into the liquid. As Linda leaves the Lambert's house, Gail chases her and says she knows the woman found their daughter. However, she begs her to keep Heather as far away from her husband as possible, revealing that she knows of Jake's inappropriate behavior. That night, Linda climbs into bed, hoping to tell her husband everything she learned. However, Mark's fallen asleep, so she says they can discuss it tomorrow. Unbeknownst to her, the man only pretended to be asleep to avoid a conversation. The next day, the woman tells her husband that the nanny was telling the truth about running away due to her troubled home life. To her surprise, Mark agrees that firing the teen might be the best because Heather isn't fit to care for their child. Suddenly, the babysitter arrives, and Linda tells her that she tracked down her parents but swears she didn't tell them where she was. The teen tearfully admits all she wanted was a new family, and she apologizes if she crossed any lines. When she learns that the couple decided to let her go so she can contact the authorities regarding the abuse she endured, she thanks the woman for supporting her. Later, during Linda's presentation to the Hooper executives, the video glitches and switches to footage of Mark and the nanny making love. The furious boss fires her on the spot, and the embarrassed woman leaves the office. She heads home, tells Chloe to go to her bedroom, then confronts her husband. He apologizes profusely but claims he doesn't remember how it happened. The woman realizes the teen played them from the beginning because she wanted their family for her own. Linda runs to her daughter's bedroom but finds that the child isn't there. Later, the couple speaks to the police, who inform them that they talked to Heather's foster parents, the Lamberts, who say they haven't seen the teen in months. Upon hearing this information, Linda asks who Heather's biological parents are, but the cop says she was left as a baby outside St. Anthony's Hospital, and the woman has a terrifying realization. The remorseful husband blames himself for their daughter's disappearance, so he heads out to search for the child. Linda heads upstairs to watch the footage from the nanny cam in Chloe's room. She sees Heather emerge from beneath the bed and leave a message telling the woman to meet her at the renovated house alone if she wants to see her daughter again. Before she leaves, the mother grabs something from a trinket box. At the house, Linda finds Heather pointing the nail gun at Chloe in the attic, and she tells the nanny she knows why she's exacting revenge. She asks the teen how she found her, and the baby Babysitter says she 
saw her in the hospital security footage. Heather believes Linda left her outside the hospital with nothing but a teddy bear. So the woman admits she was a scared teen who wanted the baby to end up in a family that could take care of her. The nanny says she suffered while living with her foster parents, but she waited until she became an adult to look for her biological mother, hoping for a joyful reconciliation. However, when she tracked Linda down, she saw that the woman never missed her and moved on with her new family. Linda defiantly says Heather can't take her family, but the teen corrects her and says she wants to destroy it. Eventually, the woman shows the nanny a gold necklace and explains it was the only thing she left her daughter with when she dropped her off at the hospital, and that she never left the teddy bear. Linda says she isn't Heather's mother because her real daughter died eight years ago, and her adoptive father returned the necklace. She tries to make the nanny understand that she wasn't the only baby that night at St. Anthony's, but Heather refuses to believe her. Linda tries to grab the nail gun, but the teen hits her on the head with a power tool, knocking her to the floor. Minutes later, Mark arrives, and he pretends to go along with the deranged nanny's plan to be a family with Chloe. However, she sees right through his act and fires the nail gun several times into his chest. Suddenly, Linda tackles the teen and finally throws her out of the attic window, causing the nanny to fall to the ground below. Months later, the happy family lives peacefully in their new house by the beach. Meanwhile, on a bus, a blonde Heather cradles a baby boy. When a woman asks what the child's name is, she says his name is Mark, just like his father. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.